I'm just pressing the button now. OK. And bear with me a second. We are now live. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much, Leslie. OK, then. So um, good afternoon, everybody. Happy New Year to you all. Thank you all for, for joining us for this meeting of the uh, licensing uh, subcommittee. I'll start off by introducing myself. My name is Councillor Dan Brown. I am ward member for Wembury and Brixton, and I'm also chairman of licensing at Southampton District Council. Perhaps if I could just get my two council colleagues to introduce themselves as well. Perhaps, Tom, could you start? Yeah, I'm uh, Tom Holway. I'm vice chair of licensing and a member of this subcommittee. Um, I'm also the ward member for the eastern one kilometre of of the road from Marriage Cross through to Mary Cross. Thanks, Tom. OK, Councillor Smurden, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, I'm Pete Smurden. I'm one of the uh, two ward members for South Brent. OK, and perhaps if I could just get um, the officers who will be speaking and presenting to, to introduce themselves as well to members of the public. So, um, Miss O'Keefe, uh, would you be able to just say who you are for the benefit of everybody? Yeah, so my name's Tara O'Keefe and I'm a senior case manager for licensing and I'll be presenting the report today. Thank you very much. OK, um, Mr Fairburn, the council solicitor, would you be able to just introduce yourself? Hello, I'm David Fairbairn. I'm Head of Legal Services and Monitoring Officer and I will be the legal advisor to the subcommittee today. Lovely, thank you very much. Uh, just to also advise members uh, that we have um, Miss Gribble and Mr White, who are both Democratic Services uh, officers uh, on the call, sort of helping administer and take minutes of the meeting. OK, uh, that's all now clear. Thank you very much. OK, so agenda item one is uh, division of the agenda. Members, I do not, uh, th th there is no need, I believe, to divide the agenda th this evening because there'll be no um, exempt information disclosed. Item number two is declarations of interests. Member, members are invited to declare any personal or disclosable pecuniary interests, including the nature and extent of such interests they may have in any of the items to be considered at this meeting. So um, any interest to declare? Councillor Holway? Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, I'm acquainted with two of the objectors to this licensing application. Um, it's certainly not a, a declarable pecuniary interest, but it may be considered to be a personal interest. OK. All right. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe Councillor Smurden has any. Mr Fairburn. Just to say, can I confirm that um, Councillor Smurden, uh, I think uh, Councillor Holloway's interest is, is it, it, he considers it, um, that it wouldn't affect his uh, judgment of this application. His relationship is not such to affect the ju his judgment of this application. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have I have no nothing to declare, Chairman. Okay. Sorry. So Tom's confirmed that his uh, his relationship with w will not affect his judgment. That's fine. Councillor Spurn has no interest to declare. OK, then item number three is application for a new premises license at Carolyn Coombe uh, Winery, Modbury, Ivy Bridge. So I'll pass over to uh, the case officer, um, Miss O'Keefe, to present the report. Hello. So um, before I start, I'd just like to correct a mistake on the report. Um, it states that the wards affected is Ermington and Ugborough. Uh, this is incorrect and the ward is actually Charterlands. Um, the purpose of the meeting today is to determine an application for a new premises licence for Callum Coombe Estate Holdings Limited uh, for Callum Coombe Winery in Modbury. The application is for the supply of alcohol for consumption on and off the premises Monday to Saturday 11am to 5pm and Sunday 11am to 4pm. A copy of the application is attached at Appendix A on page 11 of the agenda pack. During the consultation period, the police requested some further information about the non-standard standard timings. Um, this is during the main holiday season. We may offer tastings on two evenings during the week. Um, the applicants agreed to remove the non-standard timings as there were no specific dates or times provided. 
The premises is described as an agricultural building used for making and storing wine and other alcoholic drinks made from produce grown on the farm. A copy of the plan of the premises is attached at Appendix B and a map of the area is attached at Appendix C. During the consultation period, six relevant representations were received from local residents in objection to the application. No representations were received from any of the responsible authorities or local councillors. Copies of the representations are attached at Appendix D on page 37 of the agenda pack. There are concerns raised in relation to the prevention of public nuisance licensing objective, specifically that the granting of the licence may increase traffic to the area, resulting in additional noise and the potential impact on the local residents' quality of life. Other concerns include the suitability of the access roads to the premises, with particular concern about the safety of those using these roads. Some of the representations have made reference to whether the premises has the appropriate planning permission in place. Um, these are not matters which can be considered under the Licensing Act 2003, um, which must only take into account issues relating to the four licensing objectives. Should the application be granted, the premises licence would not supersede any planning restrictions in place at the premises. Also, any reference within the representations to the need or demand for the supply of alcohol at the premises cannot be can taken into consideration either. Um, I would like to make you aware that some of the objectors have disputed whether the public notice was displayed correctly at the premises. <coughs> Um, I can confirm that we as the licensing authority have seen photographic evidence of the public notice and we are happy that it was displayed correctly in accordance with the Licensing Act 2003. Thank you. OK, thank you very much for that uh, report, uh, Ms O'Keefe. Um, do either of the other panel members have any questions to ask the officer at this point? No, nothing. Thank you, Chairman. No, okay. thank you. Chairman. No, thank you. In which case, I will move uh, straight to the uh, representations. Uh, there are a number of speakers who are joining us this afternoon to raise representations on this application. Uh, each person that wishes to speak has 10 minutes to make their representation, um, and they will be cut off after 10 minutes and they'll be reminded about a minute or 30 seconds to go. I would simply ask that due to the number of people that are going to speak, that uh, the same points are preferably not repeated if possible. But of course, uh, a speaker has is welcome to say whether or not they perhaps agree or disagree with any you know comments made by a previous uh, speaker. Um, OK, so I think we'll start off with the supporter and applicant who I believe is Mr or Mrs Whitehead. Is that correct? Is it is that correct in terms of the applicant or have I got the name wrong? Mr. Whitehead, I think you may be on mute. Are, are you there, Mr. Mr. Whitehead? Could somebody tell me if Mr. Whitehead is on the call or not, please? Uh, yes, I believe he is, Chair. And the um, his his mic icon is showing as unmuted, so I'm not quite sure we were not able to hear him. Okay. Um, right. Are, are you able to hear us, Mr. Whitehead? If not, we'll have to go to um, another another speaker. Could um, could perhaps Mr. White or Miss Gribble just confirm? I believe that was the uh, that was one or two, there was one or two people speaking in in, in support. Was there anybody chair. else? I believe chair because I know you, you can't see his video. I'm just he's he Mr. White is trying to get in again by phone. I believe because he's on his phone as we speak. Both uh, I assume Mr. and Mrs. Whitehead are both on the same video link there. So um, I believe he's trying to oh. dial in as we speak. He, he certainly looked like he was on his phone. Okay. All right, um, let's perhaps just give them a minute or two more apologies for the delay here. 
um, but it's important that everybody has the chance to have their say. Mr White, could you just confirm that, that that was the only person, there was only one person speaking in favour at this point? That is my understanding, Chair. I've just seen okay. as well, as you'll see now, we've got a phone number come in. Indeed. To, yes, OK. So we'll admit into the, into the meeting now, Chair. Okay, thank you. Is now joining. Hello, sorry, this is Lance Whitehead. I hope OK, hello, that. Mr Whitehead. Uh, I'm very sorry about that. Us, um, we, we thought we'd test the microphone and for some reason it's not working no problem through at all. Teams. OK, that, that's fine. So, so just to... Just to reiterate to you, um, you have 10 minutes to, to to say your piece and make your representation um, with about a minute or 30 seconds to go. Either Mr. White or Miss Gribble will um, interject just to remind you of the amount of time you have left. And then um, I will ask you to close your comments at the end of that period. So uh, you have you have 10 minutes. Please uh, take it away, sir. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to represent ourselves at this uh, committee meeting. Um, uh, to start with, I'd like to say that our key objective is to allow guests to visit our vineyards and winery on organized tours and to allow them to taste and purchase products made on the farm from produce grown on the farm. And we intend that our activity is limited in scope. We are absolutely not planning to open a farm shop or a pub or a restaurant or a wine bar or hold weddings or similar events. And we have no idea, no, no desire to open outside the restricted and defined hours that we have applied for. Um, it, it's worth saying that Cowan Coombe is our home and we have no intention to allow our business to disturb the peace and tranquility that we love here. The next point I'd like to make is that we are not, despite claims to the contrary, uh, trying to evade any legal process or permission. As you know, we have submitted compliant applications for the premises license and for also for our licenses for the production of alcoholic products, and we have obtained agricultural planning consent for the barn. However, we believe strongly that we are supported by legal precedent set by the Millington case that has already enabled many other vineyards in the UK to invite visitors to their sites and sell produce to them as an agricultural activity. We do not require planning permission for this activity. Contrary to some objectors' comments, Millington is not about road access, but the right of a producer to sell produce grown on a farm from the farm. Our wines, ciders, and other produce fit exactly this criteria. We believe that the majority of objections raised are not relevant to the four licensing objectives. Much of what has been said by objectors is based on conjecture and is naturally prone to some exaggeration. And it shows a lack of understanding of our plans. It is Sincerely, with great regret that we find ourselves the subject of inaccurate and unsubstantiated and emotive comment. However, we genuinely believe that our license activity will turn out to have a minimum impact on the lives and activities of our neighbours. As stated earlier, our application is for limited opening hours, specifically 11 o'clock till 5 o'clock. Um, for six days a week and from 10 to 4 on Sundays. And we will control the number and timing of visiting groups during the time to be manageable by us and to minimise any impact on the local environment. However, we do also seek to be allowed to sell products to individuals who arrive during opening hours without an appointment. We, we feel that it would be inappropriate to refuse if we're open um, somebody's request to buy some wine from us, for example. It is worth pointing out that we have no intention to arrange tours every day, uh, and we, have, we don't have the capacity to do that. With all our organised visits, which is the vast majority of people who will come to see us, we will remind guests to drive along our lanes slowly, with caution, and we will point out the possibility of farm movements, riders, 
obstructions on the road, etc. <coughs> if a routing consensus is ever reached amongst our neighbours, we will do all we can to get our visitors to follow it. Um, the, the lanes, talking about the, the use of lanes and possible um, passing places, we understand that the, the lanes that approach our farm are no different to thousands of miles of unclassified roads that crisscross Devon. Everyone manages somehow with the narrow and winding nature of the lanes that are part of the charm and fabric of where we live. Drivers in the area are generally well versed with the road conditions, and in our experience, visitors are all, almost always drive even more slowly than the locals along our lanes. To put our request into some local context, nearby Shilston Manor and Ludbrook Manor, both within a mile of our location, are busy wedding venues, where large numbers gather to celebrate and drink far higher quantities of alcohol than our visitors ever will. Further afield, Michael Sutton's wine setter towards Dartmouth, their visitors have to negotiate roads very similar to ours, as do visitors to Sharpen Vineyard and many other local attractions and businesses across South Hams. Again, everyone seems to have managed perfectly well along these very similar access roads. With regards to the later objections, we cannot address each point, and we believe most are not relevant or reasonable in any case. It is unfortunate that some comments seem to have been aimed at the Council's process rather than our application itself. However, we have a few responses to some of the objections. We agree with comments concerning farms' right to use the public highways, and we feel we have the same rights to use them for our farm and our agricultural business objectives. Our neighbours do not have exclusive rights to these public highways. We take issue with the Fernie's comment that the winery invades their privacy. The planning application reported dated 7th of July 2016 states there are no neighbours close enough for the barn extension to have any impact at all. We are happy to submit a panoramic photograph uh, to you taken yesterday that shows the view from our, the front of our winery from Bearscombe, where Mr Clark lives, to Spittlescombe Manor, and that will verify uh, our position that we are not invading privacy. We um, attempted to clarify our aims to objectors in a recent letter to them, which we committed in which we committed to cooperate in any way possible to access concerns, particularly about traffic. One or more objectors have rejected every single suggestion that we submitted. With regards to passing places, objectors make reference to the use of private land. In fact, highway verges are as much a part of the highway as the asphalt surface. The space from hedge to hedge is almost always a public highway, and therefore there is capacity, in our view, to create passing places on the roads. We remain happy to follow any reasonable consensus between our neighbours concerning traffic routing, and we will take an active and supporting role in applications to the highways authorities and others for a reduced speed limit and the erection of road warning signs, etc. Um, to conclude briefly, we very much hope that we'll, we will be granted a premises licence upon which the success of our business depends. We employ several people here, and they are dependent on us for their income and their ability to pay their mortgages each month in a tough economic environment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Whitehead. Um, I'd just like to uh, bring in the council solicitor, Mr Fairburn, just to clarify uh, any legal comments that are made. So, Mr Fairburn. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think the principal point uh, that, that, was, that uh, has been made is about um, the planning position and um, references to the Millington case, etc. Um, this is a licensing committee um, whose um, consider the considerations, whose considerations um, are confined to 
considering the licensing objectives, not um, the planning merits or otherwise of um, the application. Um, the planning permission or planning is a, a separate regime and therefore any questions about whether or not there is an existing planning permission or whether Millington applies, um, etc. Are, are not relevant considerations for this committee. Your considerations are entirely confined to uh, the promotion of the, the licensing objectives. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you very much for that uh, clarification, uh, Mr Fairburn. Much appreciated. I think it also uh, relevant to point out at this point then that both myself and Councillor Holway are members of the Council's planning committee and probably wouldn't want to say anything that uh, perhaps preempts any any potential planning application in the future. So um, we'd want to be careful about that. Um, Councillor Holway, Councillor Smurden, do you have any questions of clarity to uh, to Mr Whitehead? Uh, yes, Chair. Um, I've got um, yeah a couple of questions. Okay, and go ahead. Yeah, okay. So the first one, um, in your um, uh, the evidence that you've submitted, um, and you, with and as part of your request, it, it mentions um, sale of drinks other than those produced on the estate, um, as well as from time to time other alcoholic products sourced locally. Um, could you give us some indication of, of, of you know, what, where those are coming from and what they're thinking of? And as a and also a bit of a secondary question to that. Um, I, um, Dartmouth Gin Distillery um, is obviously located at your premises um, because Dartmouth Gin Distillery, dis, distillery lists Calan Coombe as its premises on its website. Um, will Dartmouth gin um, products uh, be, be uh, part of your tastings? Could you ask that, answer that one first, please? I have a, another one, uh, Chairman. OK, that's fine. Uh, uh, thank you for the questions. Um, uh, yes, we would like to offer Dartmouth uh, gin right. to uh, our visitors, um, both to taste and to purchase. With regards to any alcoholic products not made by us, um, this is not central to what we are planning to do, and if it was considered to be appropriate, we would um, we would happily remove that from our application. Right. Okay. Um, I'm a well. I'm a bit confused in that case because the whole of this application has been with regard to the sale um, or, or the tasting of wine, etc. Um, you know, you're now saying that that. That you're also going to be offering gin, which is a you know a completely different spirit, a completely different strength. Um, I'm a bit confused there. Okay, well, if I could explain why we have a still, principally, we have we have a still here, um, and its its role uh, fundamentally will be to make brandy um, and other uh, spirits based on the fruit that we grow here. Um, at, at this stage, we don't have enough fruit uh, grown here um, or wine stroke cider from those fruits to turn into brandy. Um, and so um, w w our plan is always to extend into offering uh, spirits based on uh, fruits that we grow here. Um, and um, uh, the first of those will be cassis made from the black currants that we grow here, for example. Um, um, but yes, we would like to, um, at an appropriate time, extend our range to cover spirits, including gin, if that is considered uh, permissible. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Gin, Whitehead. Councillor Smurden, that is, is, is made using botanicals that we grow here, yeah. uh, and that's a key part of of the botanical range that we put into our spirits. Okay, Councillor okay. Spurgeon, does that answer uh, that, your question? Yeah, thanks Thanks for the information. Um, um, well, yeah, how many people um, do you intend for each tour and, and how many tours? I mean, you've said 
you, I, I'm glad um, you know that you've said that you you, uh, you won't be running tours in the evenings. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to, to note that. Um, but I think um, as a committee, we need some idea of the amount of people that you're you know that you're actually sort of talking about. So um, you say you're not going to run a tour, not, not going to run tours every day. Um, can you give us, you know, some idea of the, the amount of people per day or per week, please? Yes, certainly. Um, well, I mean, um, we've been on tours around vineyards, etc., and we know that if the groups that are taken around are, are beyond a certain quite limited number, um, the tours are dreadful. Um, and so our objective is to run tours for, you know, four to eight typically and possibly up to 12 people. And that could happen once or twice a day. But in a week, I wouldn't envisage us running more than five or six tours. Um, you know, something along those lines. It's difficult to predict the demand, um, but, but it, 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 it would be something along those lines. And obviously, at different times of the year, we'd be busier than other times. For example, at the moment, there is absolutely nothing to see in the vineyards. It's just a lines of dead vines across the hillside whereas you know just before the grape harvest where the grapes are um, nearly ready to see and everything it's it, it, it's very interesting and delightful to to walk around the vineyards and enjoy um, the vines and the views um, and you know the space that we're in um, so if you take an average over a year the numbers are pretty low um, and I would say in the height of the busiest time, we're talking about two groups of 12 a day for three or three or four days. So that, that, that's sort of what we envisage. Um, OK, does, there are does, all does sorts that of reasons question, for that. First, firstly, um, we are aware of, um, yeah, we're, we're sensitive to the comments that people have made about traffic. But also, you know, this is a busy working farm and we don't have time to devote all our time to visitors. There are so many other things that we need to do. Okay, and, okay. And as you know. Yep, yep. And if, I, if I might, Chair, yeah, yeah, if I might, Chairman, um, just a couple of comments. Um, you do actually, you, you, you say um, that, that most of your visitors will be locals, um, but, um, you know, South Hams is a premium tourist area. I mean, surely you must be aiming um, at, at, you know, at, 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 at tourists. I mean, as surely as night follows day, you know, you're, you're going to be aiming for people um, uh, from outside of the area. And the second thing I would say, based on my own experience, um, I uh, commend everybody really for trying to work out a uh, um, some form of uh, traffic management um, uh, route on the on the narrow road that comes through there. But um, I live very close to Pennywell Farm, which, as you probably know, is a premium tourist um, destination. And I can assure you that uh, no plan, no traffic plan will survive the implementation of satnavs. Um, as sure as night follows day, your uh, people come into your place from the Plymouth direction will be directed through Ermington and they'll come from the south. People coming from the north will come along the B3196. And with the prevalence of sat navs in cars, um, that is only going to be the way that it's going to go in the future. I'm afraid. Anyway. Um, yes, I think that, that I think that's very fair comment, Councillor. Um, but, but I think if you put our location in context with Pennywell, we're talking about having four or six cars a day when we're busy uh, of visitors. Um, you, you know, for that. 12 to 18 or whatever people who turn up to see us. Um, um, so we, we, we do believe that the impact on the, the roads by these visitors will be relatively low. Um, with, with regards to your comments about whether we have local or um, uh, holiday make uh, holiday maker guests, we would imagine that we will have both. But I think um, we have a very strong local following already and great enthusiasm for what we're doing. And we see some local people coming here quite often during, or, you know, several times a year um, from Modbury or somewhere nearby and possibly during the summer when Chelsea on Sea decants to Solcombe and Dartmouth. 
some of them will probably come along. Um, we, we would struggle to stop them, I expect. Um, but, okay. uh, you know, we're trying to run a business and we've got to try and yeah, get yeah. a balance between okay, um, uh, Thank the you. numbers we can handle and who they are. I mean, it, that's okay. okay. Thank you. That's Thank you. I, I, I'm sure I, I Councillor answers, Holloway wants uh, to go. I think that answers Councillor Spurs. Um, Councillor Spurs, yeah. have you got any other questions? No, that's Thank fine. You. Thank you. Lovely. Thank okay, Councillor Holloway. That's, Just, that, that, that's fine. Thank you. Councillor Holloway, anything that you wish to ask? Well, a brief, brief observation, Chairman. Um, okay. I think um, you mentioned that there were a couple of places within a mile of your farm. Is that right? Uh, yes, Councillor, yes. Yeah, um, I mean, you're talking to a pedant, unfortunately. Ludbrook Manor is about two miles away and Shilston Barton is about one mile away and they both have access from the Ridge Road, which is considerably better, not an awful lot wider, but considerably straighter than the road past Callan Coombe. Just to make that point. Thank you. Yes, so if I may uh, respond, sir, um, th they are both within a mile. If you take a straight line, which is what I have done, they are well, I'm certainly looking at within a, a mile. Well, I'm looking at a straight line now. Um, no, for, by a sat nav, it's further for sure, but I'm talking about uh, as a straight line from where we live. Well, um, with respect, sir, I'm looking at a 25,000 map on my other computer, and I can guarantee you it's two miles from Ludbrook Manor to Coombe as the crow flies. OK, well, I have to stand corrected. Sorry. OK, thank you. Right. OK, all right. Thank you very much uh, for your comments, Mr Whitehead. Uh, thank you for your comments and questions, councillors. I, I think I should just make it clear that each speaker will only be able to speak once, OK? And I'm, I, I, I'm going to try uh, to make sure that there isn't any toing and froing between speakers uh, either. So I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to try and be quite firm on that. Um, next up, I believe we have uh, an objector to this application. Uh, and I, I think we have, we have a few objectors. We have... Uh, Mr. Clark, Mr. Furno, Mrs. Kane, and Mrs. Hoskins, if, if I'm if, if I'm correct. So uh, I think we'll start off with uh, Mr. Clark. And Mr. Clark, you have. Can I just confirm? Is Mr. Clark on the call? Yes, I am. Yeah. You are. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay, you have uh, ten minutes to make your your representations. Uh, Mrs. Gribble will give you a sort of 30 second warning when you when your time is almost up and then we'll uh, stop you at 10 minutes. But uh, please do go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I'm James Clark representing my parents who are Graham and Teresa Clark, Callum Coombs closest neighbours. Uh, I was interested yesterday to look through the summary of the applicant's current proposal to allow for safe use of the public routes to their premises. I requested and I had a meeting with them about this very subject, but I'm still not sure of their intent to act upon these proposals if an unconditional license is granted, especially as a few of the positive things discussed have not yet been explored by the applicants with any of their neighbours. As far as I know, no channel of communication to sort out this issue has been set up. Having talked to both parties, we are no longer certain that a happy resolution is possible. One thing I am certain of is that the routes to Callancoom are not currently suitable for significant increase in daily traffic. As this increase without any road improvements would definitely lead to a clear and consistent public nuisance. As you can see from the attached videos, it is primarily a single winding lane, which I'm getting quite a lot of echo. I don't know if someone can mute me or turn me down on their speaker. Well, a bit of echo as well, actually. Could, could we make sure that everybody else is on is on mute, please, whilst Mr. Clark is speaking to avoid feedback? Thank you. Carry on, Mr. Clark. Um, so, yeah, and in this and this increase without any road improvements would definitely lead to a clear and consistent public nuisance. I did send some videos along, but I'm not sure if anyone's watched them. But um, the, they show that the roads are primarily a single winding lane, which at no point is sufficient for two cars to pass, except in the few passing places. There are numerous blind corners and areas where reversing is required around these corners to reach a passing place. Four of these areas require a confident driver who is able to cover a distance of over 100 metres whilst driving backwards blindly around corners. This is something even residents find difficult and dangerous. I'd like to give a very brief summary of the two main access routes to, that lead to the main road. Marriage Cross to Callancoom, this route is a total of 1.1 miles and consists of two real sections, 
There was a short, popular section near the main road with two sharp corners and multiple resident-owned passing places. This then leads to a longer, more hazardous section containing two of the aforementioned blind corners and long reversing areas. This second part is 0.7 miles long and contains at best four passing places, including my parents' drive. There are eight dwellings along this route, some of which are located directly alongside the road. Callan Coombe to Yarnicum and St Mary's Cross. This route splits into two branches, one joining the main road at Yarnicum, uh, 1.1 miles, and the other towards St Mary's Cross, 1.4 miles. Both of these contain the remaining sharp bends, blind corners and limited passing places. Um, the, this route contains three residents who as farmers use the lane for agricultural purposes, purposes on a regular basis. Having considered these routes, I think it's quite obvious that inviting unrestricted and unlimited use and access to drivers who are unaware of the difficulties of the road has a potential for disaster. It seems to me that a clear set of road improvements and a suitable traffic management system should be a clear condition of the license being granted. As an addendum to this, and in regards to Mr and Mrs Whitehead's comments in their most recent submission about the frequency of occasions in which they have been required to reverse on these roads, I must say they are incredibly lucky. I lived at my parents' house as a driver for four years and would honestly expect to reverse five or six times a week instead of their 12 times in six years. It simply is not fair to misrepresent this frequency when, to my knowledge, Mr and Mrs Whitehead have not both been full residents of the valley, full-time residents of the valley for a vast portion of their ownership. When I approached the applicants in order to discuss a resolution to their objection, they were well aware of the problems with the road. This has led me to wonder why they had not already addressed these issues prior to making the application. This is especially odd as they had knowledge of Miss Hall's planning ruling in their 2016 application, drawing attention to the deficiencies of the road. Um, this is referenced in our evidence and I quote it below. I understand that planning ruling can't be taken into account in this procedure, but her comments do make quite clear the limitations of the road. So I'll just quickly quote that. Um, in the section highways and access, Miss Hall says, and I quote, the existing barn is considered to generate its own traffic, but it is likely that the vast majority of this will be confined to the farm itself, as farm machinery and plant. The proposal, although adding to the area of the barn, is therefore considered to be unlikely to have any capacity to generate traffic that would have a significant impact on the highway. The barn is located at the end of an agricultural track, end quote. I must reiterate this is the same barn that will soon be used as a visitor centre and tasting venue without the planning permission they, they don't intend to get, a use that seems to me will only attract traffic that will, in fact, impact the highway. Given that they have had almost five years to make improvements or contact their neighbours or highways about a resolution, I am reticent to rely simply on their word for any future developments regarding the road safety, especially as a significant attempt to improve the road may depend on their cooperation with other residents. I believe it is essential in order to avoid causing a public nuisance for the applicants to support section five of their letter to residents, i.e. traffic safety, by organising a sufficient and exact plan for road improvements and traffic management, which can then be made into a legally binding condition of the licence being granted. Additionally, in my opinion, a condition to make tastings by appointment would only seem sensible. Sadly, it was the applicant's choice to open a vineyard in such an inaccessible location, and the onus has to be on them to negotiate a traffic pattern that leads to a safe resolution for all users. It's a real shame that no significant dialogue has been attempted in the past five years or, or, or up until now, really. Um, and I ask if any beyond their after the fact letters and submissions would have occurred if I hadn't approached them or we had not raised objections. We, my, myself and my father, have spoken to other residents and their position is very clear. They are very concerned with road safety and intend to appeal any decision which does not take this into account. Unfortunately, there seems to be a considerable amount of bad feeling between the applicants and other residents, many of whom happen to only control the use of the majority of the passing places along either route. It would affect my parents drastically if the animosity escalated to the extent that the existing goodwill that allows the usage of these passing places were to be removed. In all honesty, the loss of any of the few existing passing place places would make the road impassable. I do also get the feeling that the applicants are somewhat out of touch with the residents' concerns when they repeatedly suggest installing brown tourist signs on the main road without having already implemented or confirmed a plan for any road improvements or traffic routes. Inviting passers-by of no concept of the road limits, road's limitations would create chaos. It would lead to a more it would it would lead to even more of a public nuisance for residents and quite possibly many disgruntled customers. A system to allow safe use of the road 
I believe is simply essential and should be, in my opinion, the primary concern of the applicants before they talk of installing brown tourist signs, building catering kitchens, or even implementing wine tasting. I also note, I think like the councillor may have done, that the applicants have downplayed the amount of traffic they can realistically generate. Even at their conservative estimates, you could expect 30 plus cars a week to be going up and down the road. But I must suggest that if this enterprise is remotely viable based on this incredibly minimal usage, um, they, are, they are simply under, understating it slightly. I suggest that once they receive this license, add their signage to the roads and finish their cafe or visitor center shop, the real usage will be far more significant. As an estimate, um, you could be looking in the region of 20 cars a day in peak periods. This could mean even by lower estimates, over 6,000 cars a year, making 12,000 trips down a road well beyond its capacity, all of whom may have tasted a variety of spirits and wine. Okay. If this is the case, then the residents' concerns are more than valid despite the applicant's attempt to downplay them. I note the applicants use Sharpen as a comparison and when visiting only last week prior to the lockdown, there were 15 cars in their top car park and more in their larger bottom car park. And the access road was, and the access road to there is only 350 metres long and straight with speed bumps, restrictions and passing places. I note they also mentioned Shilston and other wedding venues, but as with any venue like that, you'd expect the high significant usage they talk about once or twice a week, maybe in the summer, three or four times in the evening. I must admit, we have been confused by the changeable position of the applicants. For example, it is written on their website and in their initial application that they intend to sell glasses of wine, charcuterie and cheeses or light snacks to consume on their, prem on their premises. However, in their most recent submission and response to objectors, they state- to remaining. Oh, Thank you very much. They state that they only intend to offer tastings by appointment solely for products produced on their farm. But with a catering kitchen on the plan, this is clearly not the case. The applicants seem happy to say whatever they wish in order to gain unrestricted approval and do not hide from this in their most recent response. This is why, in my opinion, the resident safety should be safeguarded by the subcommittee in making the implementation of improvements and suitable traffic systems a condition of the licence. Again, a condition ensuring wine tasting via by appointment only would also help in this regard. I do regret to be in the position of having to object to the licence. We personally have only ever wished the best to all of our neighbours' endeavours. We really have no quarrel with the vineyard offering wine tastings. Our concern is simply with the safety of the road. I personally made all efforts to come to a happy resolution to avoid our objection going this far, but sadly the applicants have appeared unwilling to support their suggestions with any concrete actions. By their manner, it seems to me once they obtain this license, their motivation to reach an That's agreement with the residents. Okay. There we go. Thank you very yeah. much, Mr. Clark. Thank you for your No worries. Um, Mr. Sorry, uh, councillors, uh, any questions for Mr. Clark? Um, no, Chairman, not really. Okay. No, nothing for me, Chairman. Thank, thank, you. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I, I, I would just um, please re remind people making representations. Uh, I, I'm not particularly happy about any comments which refer to another person's character, to be honest. Um, I, I, I urge everybody speaking to be respectful of others on the call and um, just caution that in future representations, please. Okay, uh, next, I believe, thank you, that was Mr. Clark. Now, if we can move on to um, Mr. Ferno, uh, who, can you just confirm you're on the call, please, Mr. Ferno? Um, uh, Mr. Ferno is on the call, Chairman. Um, yes, there he is. Are you there, Mr. Ferno? Uh, yeah, I did drop out of it, but yes. Okay, all right, thank you. So, Mr. Ferdo, you have uh, you have ten minutes to speak. Just a reminder: if you could try and avoid making any comments that have already been made, that would be greatly appreciated. But um, uh, Miss Gribble will remind you when you have one minute left. Go ahead, sir. Um, I am suffering from COVID at the moment, so I will try and keep this as um, short as possible. Um, well, basically, you've seen uh, my two uh, two emails that I've sent in. I'm very much the same as everyone else is saying. The road, the access is a big problem. I've always got on quite well with my neighbours. They've they've um, they've always been helpful whenever I've had any problems. But um, 
if they didn't have this poor access, it wouldn't be a problem. If they had access onto a B road, it would be no problem at all. I, w I wouldn't be making this complaint. I've only, had, this is the first complaint, I'm over 50. I've never made a complaint in my life. So it's not like I'm a serial complainer or anything. It is something that I think will have a detrimental impact on my business. I'd just like to go through, they've sent out an eight, an eight page um, letter here. I'd just like to reply to a few of the points that were concerned me on it. Um, in the on the first page of the letter, um, they they do they they um, mention that um, they recently let our sheep graze on their um, property. We're, we're very grateful for the free grazing. That was very nice of them. It does it is a little suspicious to me. They've been there eight years, and a week after they let um, us graze our sheep for nothing, they put in a highly contentious application for. Uh, for a, a license, I don't know. I don't know if the two things were connected, but uh, it is a bit suspicious. I'm not. I'm no expert on the Millington case, um, but from my point of view, just reading them, what they say in their letter, it seems to be for products that are produced on the property, agricultural products. <coughs> <coughs> So I don't know how that stands up against um, them selling um, dark distillery products, which are, by anyone's definition, I would call manufactured products. Where 90% of the, well, more than that, other than the water, 99% of the, of the ingredients are bought in. It's hard to justify, justify that on those terms. Um, also, they're comparing themselves to Sharpen. Well, a brief look around the internet, and I see that um, Sharpen has 12,000 vines at the moment, and Calicum has 22,500. So when their vines are fully developed and producing as they should do, they'll be producing almost twice as much wine as Sharpen. It doesn't really add up the figures that they're only going to be um, having 12 or 18 visitors a day if they've got twice as much wine to sell as Sharpen do. You know, if they if they get the permission, and I'd be the same, I would push it for all it's worth because if you're making all of the margin out of the wine, it's obviously better to sell it direct to the public. So I, I think they, like your last um, complainant said, I think um, they're seriously underplaying what the effect of the traffic on the road could be. It, it could be, um, you know, it's, it's open to question how many extra cars will be on, on the road. And as I've said in my two complaints, um, that is my serious, um, most serious uh, complaint is about, um, you know, I've been operating a farm business here, agricultural for you know, all my life, and I depend on the lane. I know, I know it's not my, it's not my, uh, ex, um, you know, I don't have some rights to lay. No, I'm not saying I do, but it will have a negative impact on my business. It's, it's undoubtedly it will. Um, as I, I put a, just a small example there of uh, making silage with a forage wagon. If it happened to be that I couldn't, they were talking about a one-way system at the time. If I couldn't, um, I obviously, if I was going with the traffic out of my property, I. I'd have no trouble at all going that way, but coming back with a fully laden trailer, if I wasn't able to get back to my property because of continual cars <coughs> coming out, I would have to drive all the way around to Witchcombe, which I measured it is over six miles extra. And then with a heavily laden trailer, that's um, an extra half hour journey. And 50 loads a year, that's two and a half thousand just on that one operation, and several days lost as well. And you know, it's um, just for them to sell their wine for a few pounds of a bottle extra. It's not all, we can't all gain, you know, um, they, they have got options. I don't have options. I've got to, so I've got to feed my cows. Um, you know, they can concentrate on developing their, uh, their uh, website and their online sales. I, on the other hand, have got to feed my cows. I, 
you know, I've got no option but to go on the lane. Similarly, we're moving my stock. I mentioned that they, they suggested that we move our stock times a day when the vineyard wasn't open. Well, it's not, we milk cows twice a day, morning and evening. It's a bit rich to be telling me to, you know, go out in the dark and shift my stock or get up four o'clock in the morning, do it before milking, because the vineyard's going to be open. They're treating the lane like it's their own private, public, or private path. <coughs> anyway, I'm moving along. I also, um, on the building over there, um, they put this building there, no consultation with me. Um, they put it as far away from their own buildings as they could, and right on my boundary hedge. Um, they, he did say in his reply that uh, Mr. Uh, Whitehead said um, he read out something from uh, maybe it was a field officer from South Downs Council saying that uh, the building just overlooked fields. Yeah, well, it happens to be my field, and I happen to have to go and fetch my cows and, from milking. And I think I do think it is an invasion of my privacy if I'm fetching my cows in, in the evening and I'm being watched by a load of people drinking wine. It's all been done without any of my knowledge. And I would like to know why all the viewing points on that building are facing me. If you go to the vineyard for a viewing, why don't you have your viewing points facing the vineyard? And also I've got um, I've got a planning application report from uh, Mrs. Jenny Draper. It was dated... I don't see the date of the second, but I believe it was 90, um, 2014 for the original um, the original 30 metre by 15 metre house. And it clearly states um, we're actually a new agricultural building for fodder vineyard equipment, vin vineyard equipment and machinery. The building measures 30 metres by 15 by 3.9 to the ridge. I can't see. Um, looking at this, there's no dimensions on their plans that they've included in this application, but I can't understand how they've managed to get two floors into a shed that's only 3.9 metres tall. That's only 12 and a half feet. So I'm taking room for uh, insulated sheets on the roof and um, the, um, the amount of joists for the floor. You would have to be five foot six to fit in there. I can't. I, I think there's something wrong with the needs investigating on that front, whether the, you know there's been a mistake somewhere there. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be considerably disruptive for me, and um, I don't, um, I, I don't understand why it's necessary. It's going to have a dis, you know, disruptive. <coughs> <coughs> impact on our farm and just so they can sell their wine for a little bit more than they would do otherwise. They've all got considerable outlets for their wine. You have one so minute I remaining. See that it's necessary. Um, that's all I've got to say really, Mr Chairman. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, well, thank, thank you, you uh, Mr time. Ferno. Um, uh, sorry to hear that you're suffering with COVID and certainly wish you a speedy recovery. Um, I, I would ju just point out a lot of these comments that I'm uh, that, that we're getting are are planning related comments. Um, and, um, and yes, um, this is my, a licensing meeting. Um, yeah, and, my, and, and whilst I appreciate these things, it's desirable for them to be considered. We are only here to be considering the licensing objective. So I just that that, that, that that's yes. more a comment to the committee members than anybody else. But also, if anybody else is going to make comments relating to planning, please keep them to that of licensing material matters. Um, Councillor Smurd and Councillor Holway, have you got any questions for Mr. Ferno? Uh, no, thank you, Chairman. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ferno. Anyway. Um, is is Mrs. Kane on the line? Is there Mrs. Kane there? I'm sorry, I, I don't have your first name. I'm sorry. 
No, that's okay. Sorry, I'm uh, struggling to take myself off mute. Can you hear me now? Okay, all right. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Kate. Uh, uh, as before, you have um, 10 minutes um, uh, and, and you'll be given uh, a, a minute's notice by Mrs. Gribble uh, when your time is coming up, but uh, please do go ahead. No, and thank you. Um, and um, I suppose for my side of things, I welcome the opportunity to be able to just put a few additional things. And I'd like to thank um, James Clark and David um, for putting forward their views, which are obviously ours. Um, and so I won't, um, um, as you said, uh, uh, replicate on those. I suppose from our kind of, our side of things, we, will, we are um, interested um, and, and concerned around the access and certainly the increase of traffic. Um, in addition to this, we, we recognise that um, the, um, the the winery want to try and make a, a commercial business here. We are all in the in the world of making money. Um, however, we are trying to make a commercial business down a lane. Um, we if if we if we're talking about the numbers like we've we've talked earlier. Um, so the visitors, if you were only to have those those amount of visitors in, I'm sure you wouldn't make too much money. However, I can recognise that you would want to extend and the rec and the extension to this raise concerns to us. Yes, we can all we can all sit back and see that, you know, perhaps a half a dozen cars um, a day won't make too much concern. However, you put up visitors signs, we look at things like that. It is going to raise interest. You know, we, we don't have a vineyard around here. You know, many, most people don't. So they're all going to be inquiring. They're going to drive down the line out of curiosity. People are generally nosy. So they will, you know, kind of, oh, well, we'll just head down here. Only, during, you know, during the winter here, you know, a few weeks ago, we had one of the milk tankers stuck with a, somebody visiting, going down the lane. They were unable to reverse. She burns her clutch out trying to reverse. I was sat on a horse beside, behind the milk tanker. It took 20 minutes to get up the hill. That's just one example. We, we, we live in this environment and, and we recognise that it's a challenge for everybody. I don't disagree with that. So I think, I think it's really important that we do recognise those things. The other, and I would like to note, I'm kind of on the website at the moment, and I, I will just read it out because it's important because this is how you're advertising your business. Currently, we are only open for visits by appointment, hence currently. However, once our visitor centre is completed, you will be able to come and taste our wines, relax with a glass of wine, platter of local cheeses and charcuterie, or book a guided tour, or book a guided tour. So it means that you are welcoming people all day throughout your, your opening hours, recognise they're 11 to 5. Um, you are also able to provide private tours. And I think from our side of things, what that does do is just open up continuous custom to you, recognising you're trying to make a business and make, make some money out of this. However, we are also trying to do that. As David's also pointed out, agriculture doesn't work 11 till 5. So when you're saying we'll try and plan around you or you'll tell us when you've got your book tours, that's not going to work. Because actually, when we're doing harvest, when certain arrangements within the farming calendar whether that's you know kind of weather it's around um calving it's around lambing it's all those kind of things they cannot be booked in a time slot with yourself so i'm sorry that that just doesn't work for us and you know we are in a really lovely area of the country we value our we, we value our um areas we value our neighbors usually we we, we do like the people that are around us and so we want to do is work with people now i wouldn't want i it's nice to see a vineyard i you know i absolutely recognize that we could have had so much worse so i do take that into consideration and i do think that um there are ways around um different things however when you run trying to run a commercial business down a very narrow windy sharp cornered lane i think it's a it's really a no-goer. Um, you know, if you're going to do something like this, I think it should be in a viable place for your for your clients. However, that does then take out your wine tours. And I do I do recognise that. However, 
you know, it, it's what everybody needs to considering when setting up a business. Um, I will obviously just take into note that we, we yes, we recognise we have horses here on our property. I, we ride horses ourselves. And very often now we have to go back for cars. Cars don't go back for us. We've had that all through this summer when people are visiting the area. That's really, it, it's not good way of, you know, that puts us off. That also puts horses under stress. I can imagine that also puts, if anybody was walking, you know, and perhaps pushing a push chair, that's also, you know, if they can't get back, sometimes they have to go back. It's not a good way of kind of managing our countryside and our environment. Um, unless Martin has anything else to add, uh, add. No. Um, thank you for the time. The yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kane. Uh, Councillors Smurden Holway, have you any questions for uh, Mrs. Kane? Um, no, not Go really. But I, I am um, conscious, uh, Chairman, that. Um, the bulk of what we're hearing is planning related. Um, yeah, I, I, I appreciate um, that. Can you Councillor Holway, are you trying to say something? Nothing, no, nothing more from me, Chairman. Thank you. OK, all right. OK, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Kane. Um, finally, uh, our, our final speaker this afternoon um, is Mrs. Hosking on the line. Sally Hosking. Mrs. Hoskin, you're on mute. Mrs. Hoskin, uh, can you hear us? Mr. White, did you say she's on mute? She, she is, Chair. I think she's just trying to look at the video and I think she's just trying to mute her device. But yeah, at the moment she's on mute. OK, uh, whilst we're waiting for, for, for Mrs Hosking, um, I, I would just like to highlight the comment that Councillor Smurn just made. We're, we're hearing a lot of, and understandably, a lot of comments relating to highways, but but we're hearing a lot of comments which are, are planning matters as opposed to licensing matters. We, we are here to determine this application based on the four licensing objectives, and therefore I, I really would urge uh, members of the public to, to to keep their comments to 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 licensing matters. Um, just whilst we're waiting for Mrs. Hosking, I, I think Mr. Fairburn, the council solicitor, wanted to come in and um, and make a comment. You, Mr. Fairburn, thank you, Chairman. I, I think I was only going to say what you just said. In fact, because a lot of the comments relate to road safety and highways issues, uh, and they are strictly speaking not matters. Um, that yep. she was the licensing subcommittee can take into account. Uh, it's unfortunate, uh, yes. but that is the way. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Ferber. I, I, I hope members of the uh, public appreciate that now. Do we have Mrs. Hosking? Is she there? She's, I can just see she's got, she's struggling to unmute, Chairman. I can just see on the video that she's just trying to check in her device here. She can unmute. She's. Um, OK, still whilst watching then, uh, just, just to inform uh, those watching this of how the rest of the meeting will proceed, we have one final speaker, Mrs Hosking, who I believe is speaking uh, in objection to this application. Uh, once we've heard Mrs Hosking and uh, councillors have had a chance to ask any questions they have of the speaker, the committee will adjourn uh, to consider this matter. This will be myself, Councillor Holway and Councillor Smurden, and we will be um, assisted by the council solicitor, Mr. Fairburn, who will simply be there to ensure that the committee comes to a decision which is uh, legally sound, shall we say. So um, at that point, uh, after Mrs. Hosking has, has made her I'm... case. Uh, oh, are you there, Mrs. Hosking? I hope so. Yes, we can hear you. I'm... Splendid. OK, good. Uh, so Mrs. Hosking, uh, as with everybody else, um, you have you have 10 minutes. Mrs. Gribble will um, remind you when there's one minute left, but uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Chairman. I'm sorry I held you up. I'm right. speaking on behalf of Roger and Philip Hosking of Lacombe Farm. Um, a lot of what I was going to say has already been said, 
<clears throat> so I'll miss out the problems with the roads, except to say, since the existence of the vineyard, traffic has increased significantly and has caused problems for those living and working in the valley, especially for the farmers who need to tend and feed their livestock and maintain their fields and hedges. We've not got a big farm, but we have about five miles of hedges to trim. So you can imagine what that's like when we meet calves in the valley. For years, farmers have got on with not too many problems. But in recent times, problems and unpleasant incidents have occurred, and it's our fear that these will escalate if more traffic uses the valley. We think many visitors to the vineyard are unaccustomed to driving in these long, narrow lanes and don't adapt to the conditions and circumstances. And then drivers become frustrated, particularly when they have to reverse some distance to a passing place. Sometimes they are asked to reverse more than once. Many of them can't reverse. Tempers flare and incidents occur. These incidents are not confined to residents and drivers, but have been incidents between non-resident drivers and even groups of drivers. In his recent letter to neighbours, the applicant sets out his solutions to the problems, but these only increase our fears. I did wonder about visitor numbers, but those have been answered. But as he wants to put signage, tourist signage up on the, on the road, he really has no idea. And um, he has said that he would welcome those visitors that did just turn up. He is expecting farmers to work around his events, which they should look up on his website to see. This is totally impractical, impracticable. And so are his proposals for a one-way system for traffic. We would also like to query the notice of this application that is advertised. I notice. I note that Miss O'Keefe said it all was satisfactory under the law, but the notice was placed high on a neighbour's tree, making it impossible to read from standing on the road. We understand that some people managed to stand on their tractor to see it, Somebody else stood at the back of their truck to see it. We took a photo of it and then enlarged the photo so that we could read it. The applicant has sent in a photo to prove it was according to the law, but his photo does not show the height from the road to the notice. We understand the notice also appeared in the Western Morning News when it is the custom locally to read these applications in the local weekly papers like the Kingsbridge Gazette. And there's a strong feeling that some people in the valley have been discriminated against in this extraordinary time of a pandemic. Newspapers were not easily available not everyone is able to use a computer, as has been shown this afternoon. I've had to have help this afternoon. We're not trying to shut down the estate's business. It already sells its products online. We suggest this side of the business could be expanded by taking their wine tasting events to other already licensed premises, which there are many 
and very varied in the South Hams and beyond. That would not only bring new customers to their, for their produce, but it would benefit the host venue. It would also alleviate the problems of even more traffic in this unsuitable situation and allow local residents to go about their daily business without harassment and intimidation. I've got some of our answers to the letter that Mr Whitehead sent to neighbours. We were very concerned about him placing his tourist signs because it would not only add to his invited guests visiting the vineyard, but it would bring in passing traffic, traffic that was interested in vineyards, but other people that were just curious and would follow the signs. The in-state website may display the opening times, but farmers cannot be expected to look up his website and plan their work accordingly. <clears throat> there are so many factors and variables involved, it's just not viable or practical or sensible. And the owner says he will advise his guests on behaviour, etc. He can't enforce it, and by judging from some of the unfortunate incidents that have already occurred, if advice was given, it was ignored. There are three lanes leading to the, the winery. If one is chosen as a specified route, it's very unfair on those living and working there to have all the passing traffic. Similarly, a one-way system for guests would be problematic, even unworkable, especially at busy times in the farm year. The lanes for the main part are bordered by high hedges. Hedgerows are protected and cannot be dug out to make passing places. Any alteration to the structure of the road would have to have permission of highways authority. And such permission, if it was granted, costs. Who pays? Similarly, with signage, is the applicant was willing to put up unofficial signs, but they have no legal authority and the powers that be do not encourage too many roadside signs. Permanent signs and reducing the speed would have to be approved by the relevant authorities and even if agreed, <coughs> sorry, even if agreed, which is a doubtful, it would be costly. He likens the access to the winery to that of Towers and Shelston. And as Councillor Holway has said, both these venues are within easy reach of the A3121 and really cannot be com compared. <coughs> Excuse me. So we urge councillors we have one minute remaining we urge councillors to reject this application on the grounds that it is a public nuisance to those living in the valley and we're also concerned there are safety issues thank you very much thank you very much mrs hosking thank you for your your comments um councillors do you have any questions uh, for the speaker, please. Uh, no, Chairman, not from me. No, nothing from me, Chairman. Thank you. OK, thank you very much then. Thank you for your comments, Mrs Hosking. Um, OK, yep. so that is all of uh, the speakers heard. I, I don't believe there's any other speakers left, is them, uh, Ms Gribble? Uh, no, Chair, that's, uh, that's everybody. Lovely. OK, so thank you very much to everybody for uh, your contributions uh, this afternoon. Uh, the committee will now uh, retire uh, along with uh, Council, uh, 
Mr Fairburn to uh, consider and deliberate over this application. Um, notice of the decision will then, I believe, be issued via email and on the council website to the applicant and um, and to those who made representations. That's that's correct, isn't it, um, Miss O'Keefe? I think that's how we let people know. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyone who's done any postal objections, you'll be sent um, the the documents by post. But if not, it will be by email. Um, and we usually say within five working days after today's date, you should receive that. OK, great. Thank you. So um, I'd like to ask councillors to stay on the line because we'll be using this meeting to discuss it. Um, but um, everybody else, uh, goodbye and, and thank you for attending this afternoon. I, I'll i close this meeting now. If you don't know how to um, turn this meeting off, I'm sure Miss Scribble can, um, can uh, Miss Scribble and Mr White are able to, to remove you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk. Good afternoon, Ron. Right, I've got, um, I need to go and get some of those birthday cards. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, um... <clears throat> is now exiting. <laughs> Leslie, before we all 